Thank you for listening to the Business Blast podcast. So for all my listeners out there that have been wanting to do your own podcast, I'd like to introduce to you Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing, and monetizing your podcast. So before I found Anchor, I had never actually done a podcast because all the research that I had uh, gathered made it seem very complex. Then I found Anchor, and Anchor makes podcasting extremely simple. So if you want to do your own podcast, go to anchor.fm forward slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Business Blast podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Wagner. Today, I have Jimmy Coleman with us. He is a partner in the fastest growing startup in North Carolina and founder of the LinkedIn Lead Challenge, where he teaches professionals how to turn LinkedIn connections into profitable leads. So welcome to the show, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. Grateful to have you on. So, Jimmy, the first question we ask on this show is, what is the best story from your life that has an underlying valuable message? Mm, um, I think a good place to, uh, to start with that, because there's a lot of stories, but uh, I think a good place to start is when I graduated high school. And I actually started my first thing at a high school was selling cut coat knives. And uh um, man, it was, it was cool because after like the second week I was like, I was working so hard and I was just like so motivated that I was, I was forgetting to eat. And, uh, so that's a question I ask people a lot of times, like, have you ever worked so hard where, um, you, you forgot to eat or, um, or like, have you ever experienced that morning, that feeling like Christmas morning when you're eight years old, uh, on an, on an ordinary day. And, uh, so that, that was a very, um, a formative time for me and I actually liked it so much that two weeks into college so I was working so hard enjoying myself and then um and then I, w- I went to college and I got sat in a desk for hours and um you know and talked at and uh, I didn't like that it was a completely different feeling and so after two weeks of college I I left and I told my parents I'm leaving college to sell mm-hmm. knives full time. Awesome. And uh, you can imagine that scared them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it worked out though. I, I, um, I became, um, I broke a lot of national records as far as sales performance goes within six months. They moved me up to the head office in Virginia, uh, where I'm originally from. And, uh, I had built and led a sales team of like over 80 people at, at one time. And, uh, out of, over 600 offices, we were the number two office in the country. And so, um, we, it, it definitely like, in, I rode that train for three years and, uh, and then eventually went into some other things. But yeah, I, I think you're kind of asking for a lesson that I can kind of pull from that, but, um, there's a lot that can be pulled from that. Part of it is just that like, you know, not one person's path is, is definitely the same. And it really opened my eyes, um, to, you know, my entire life, what the plan was going to, college for four years and then doing a normal job or whatever um but that was like the first time i significantly went off the track that i thought i was going to be on and um the the plan that god had for me was completely different than what i originally had for myself so that's that's led to so many other things and my girlfriend now is and we've been together for a long time she's always asking me like what the plan is and uh, now I just tell her, I don't know. Um, but like, I'm content with it. And, uh, just knowing that me doing my part. And that's the other big lesson that I had from that too, is, um, I could look, look at myself in the mirror every single day and know that I was giving it my best. Um, and I didn't really worry about my decisions as much because I knew I was working my hardest and I had the faith, you know, I, to put all the other worries aside and just put it in God's hands. And so, um, you know, that's, that's a big lesson I learned from that too, is like, if I hold up my end of the bargain, everything else will work out. So yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, way to listen to uh, what you wanted to do, man. Most people, it took me two years in college before I listened to myself and dropped out. So two weeks sounds better than me. <laughs> uh, Less debt, man. I got a full refund. I, I quit so fast. I got a full refund. Yep. I didn't get a refund. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So the next one I got for you is what is the most valuable piece of information we should know that's within your expertise or industry? 
Sure. Well, um, and you announced, so Mako Medical Laboratories is the fastest growing company in North Carolina for actually the past three years in a row. Uh, no, no other company's ever done it uh, two years in a row. So we're, uh, we're the big shots right now. And uh, I'm a partner in that company. And then as you know, I also um, am creating my own course on LinkedIn, teaching people how to create leads on LinkedIn. And um, I, we've actually implemented a lot of the things that have helped us grow really quickly onto LinkedIn. And so, um, but it's not, it's not going to be, my tip is not going to be so specific to those two things. It's just a general concept that works. And uh, the concept is there's really like three levels of salesmanship. Uh, so on the very bottom level of salesmanship, you have a vendor. Uh, a vendor in the medical industry is someone that usually like a doctor says, in order for me to give you my time, you have to feed me. They're putting you in that box where you're like you're not valuable enough for me to even learn something from. Uh, so I need to I need you to pay me in order for it to be worth. I know I'd not pay me, but feed me in order for it to be worth my time. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's where we try to get our entire sales team. So like make a fastest growing company. People want to know what all, the, what all the tricks we have up our sleeve. And that's really more of a mindset with that. We never want to be put into that vendor box. How can we go to uh, maybe the next level, which is more of a consultant? So a consultant usually is someone who leans on their expertise. So if a doctor is in front of them, you know, it's funny in, in laboratory space, pharmaceuticals, medical device, is one of the few industries where the person that you're selling something to knows more about what you're selling than you do. Um, but you can change that if you can get yourself to a place where you're more of a consultant and you're a subject, <clears throat> excuse me, a subject matter expert. And whatever it is that you're talking about, like you know more about than the doctor does or whoever the decision maker is. And they can lean on you for advice on these things. They enjoy having you around them because they always learn something new and they know that, you know, they just trust you as a, as an advisor to them. Uh, a lot of financial advisors try to get to this place, but then don't really go much more beyond it. Um, the third level is where you are. It can get, kind of be split into two, actually. It's, it's whether you're more of like a business partner or even like a celebrity status. It's like, you know, how, so on the celebrity side, just to spend a short bit on that, like, if I was LeBron James selling knives, like I would have done a lot better because I'm LeBron James. Everyone knows who I am. Celebrity. Mm. Everyone wants to buy knives from LeBron James. He just makes a tweet or whatever and he'll crush it. But um, <laughs> on the business partner side is makes more sense for the average Joes like us is um, how can you be in a place where your clients have more to gain from partnering with you than you have to gain from partnering with them? And the question that we're always thinking about is if I'm, if I'm trying to sell something to someone, like what do I, what do I have to offer outside of what I'm selling? Am I more resourceful than just the product or service that I'm selling to them? And so uh, like something that we've done um, at Mako was um, we found out that independent physicians are, uh, you know, in a really hard place financially because uh, the hospitals are buying out their businesses or uh, taking all their leads, which are their patients. And so we made some political connections for independent physicians. We actually held an event where we had the Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina, the Deputy Insurance Commissioner of North Carolina, the lobbyist for our company, and had about 40 to 50 independent physicians out at a nice hotel conference room. We paid for the food and just introduced the two parties and showed that, hey, like, hey, we have we have connections to the people that can help save your business. Like we can talk about the labs and stuff like that later, but let us show you that we can be a resource. We can be a true business partner for you outside of uh, just selling you our services. And so um, that, that is a concept that has uh, really shaped the, the growth of our organization. And, and if anyone else is trying to do it, then it'll work for them too. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I could tie in, but what's your best piece of overall business advice? So not necessarily industry specific. Hmm. Um, Business advice, not industry specific. So I might need to come back to that one. Um, Okay. No, no problem. I mean, what you kind of already said does apply. Um, So, you know, I mean, it kind of does tie in. Um, but let me know if it, if it comes back. The next one I got for you is if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? 
Um, you know, something that, uh, so I, I speak at a lot of like college campuses and high school campuses and stuff like this. So this is a question that I uh, actually have to ask myself and I get asked um, on a regular basis. And um, I usually, I usually end up sharing which whatever is most rel- relative to me at the time. Um, you know, it's funny when I was in high school, I never read books. I spark notes the entire time. I don't think there was one book that I read in high school. And, uh, um, I just hated reading. I found out later I'm, I'm most likely dyslexic, which uh, explains a lot, but, um, something really changed when I found audiobooks, and I also found books that weren't being shoved down my throat. It was more about the things that, um, can help me become the best version of myself. And when I, when I started finding uh, books and information out uh, that would help me become the best version of myself and, and really were just more in line with who I wanted to become, um, I became obsessed with it. So um, I think, I think a part of it is just getting like finding the knowledge much sooner. Uh, I think another part um, is incorporating habits, uh, much earlier on. I think that something that I've noticed over the past couple of years is I've been much more steady on a day-to-day basis. I can have very high highs and very low lows, uh, just by the way that I was created. And, uh, there's ways to channel that into uh, something very positive. Um, but I've also noticed where people become, uh, medicated because that's the way that their brain works. And, um, if they're not incorporating habits every single day, like, you know, every single day, Tyler, I'm, I wake up, I smile. Like I force my, I force myself to smile as soon as I wake up. Uh, and my face isn't really awake, so it looks funny, but, uh, I smile and then I thank God that I'm alive. And I just like say a bunch of positive things, like whatever I can possibly think of. Um, and then I roll out of bed, do 20 jumping jacks to wake myself up, use the bathroom, brush my teeth. Um, you know, I already have my, and that's the other part too, is not just focusing on what the habits are that morning, but what do you do right before you go to bed? Um, so my, my gym clothes are already ready. The bag of clothes I'm going to wear after I shower at the gym are already ready. Um, and I just pick that stuff up. My water is already in the fridge, run out the door and then go to the gym and right across the street, work out, have the, have a game plan of what my workouts are already going to be. Uh, shower all that and then like you know i have i have a checklist of like what i'm gonna eat like i don't and here's some other thing i realized i just i'm never gonna like vegetables it's probably you know i don't say never very often but i'm probably never gonna like vegetables so i still need those things so understanding that i need to like drink athletic greens or my buddy's coming out with something like that but just some sort of like drink that i can get all the vegetables into like a mix and just drink it like a shot glass and so um if I were to incorporate habits much earlier on, I would have been much more consistent and steady. Uh, my confidence would have been on a different level. Um, I think that it's very true that there's people who um, get really inspired by something. And then because of their um, inability to be consistent, just based off the way that they're created and what's going on in their mind, uh, they lose a lot of momentum on those off days. And those off days can turn into one, two, three, four days in a row, and then they're back to square one. So that would have been huge for me. Yeah, man. Habits are uh, enormous, dude. And I can relate with the audiobooks, man. I listen to audiobooks like crazy. Um, so I'm with you there. Um, so the next one's kind of going down a little bit of a different path, although you kind of, I think, touched on uh, the answer a little bit in your in your previous answer. Um, is in, in your opinion, what is the key to happiness? Uh, yeah, definitely got that one. Um, it's making progress every single day. And to me, it's in three areas. Um, the, the areas are becoming a saint, making progress towards becoming a saint every day. And they're all big goals. Um, that's the other part too. Uh, so making progress towards becoming a saint every day, making progress be- towards becoming the fittest man on earth every single day and making progress towards becoming a billionaire every single day. If there's a day that goes by where I didn't make progress in those three areas, then I, I, I don't really feel as if I'm my full self. I don't really feel complete that day. Um, and so it's, it's one day at a time. Um, and happy, happiness, as you know, is a state of mind. So um, it, you really have to take it one day at a time. And I've been able to boil it down to those three things. Um, you know, as I become a father and stuff like that, I'll have subcategories for like maybe the sainthood thing. Like uh, I'll be able to say like being a good dad, like that's my branch off of being 
you know, saint like, um, if you will. But um, I think that uh, for me, it's making progress every single day towards those three things. And the other part, too, is those are the most magnetic people in the world, is something I found out. The people who are obsessed with their spirituality, extremely grounded, people who are obsessed with their fitness, and people who are obsessed with their financial success are the most magnetic people in the world. It's the people that I've noticed that people want to spend the most amount of time around because it helps them become a better, better version of themselves. So absolutely, dude, I agree with that. Um, so the next one is: is what is the best book that you've read, and what was the number one thing you learned from it? Mm, um, it's tough. Uh, if people want to reach out offline, because I got I got a good list now. Um, <laughs> but let me let's just uh, let's focus on. Um, there's a book that most people I've noticed aren't really talking about. Uh, it's by a guy who's now a friend of mine because I reached out to him after I read it to let him know how much it meant to me. But it's called How to Get a Meeting with Anyone. Um, and it's by a guy named Stu Heineck. And I think that, you know, this is really big for me because I did a lot of the groundwork to make sure that I was motivated enough to take massive action. But I also wasn't exactly sure what direction to go with it. And so it's literally a how-to book. So think about, and this is true for anyone, even my girlfriend who's in nursing school, we found out that there's people in her life that if you get in front of, there's only like, like at least a top five group of people where if you have the opportunity to get in front of them and build a relationship with them, it would completely change the game. It would change your life forever. Mm-hmm. And so figuring out who are those people and then finding out what is it going to take for you to get in front of them. And I love that chase. Uh, and, and, and part of it, it, again, it goes into how to, it goes into like cool things you can send something that a guy sent to Steve jobs to get a meeting with him. Um, you know, think of what, what would you have to do to get a meeting with Jeff Bezos? If your life depended on, it? like, what would you have to do? Um, and I mean, and you're doing things like this right now, we were talking about how, um, it, if you have a podcast, if you have a platform, you can invite someone to it, it gets really creative. And so this is a book where it's not like motivation, it's implementation, which actually was one of the most motivating parts of it. Cause like now I know what to do with all this motivation that I have. And so, uh, that, that book fired me up. He's actually coming out with another book here soon. So, um, and he also has a podcast too called contact marketing. Um, so awesome. I love that book. Awesome. And then uh, what is your favorite quote and why? So um, tell you what, let me, uh, so there's a poem actually, Mm -hmm. and it's called uh, man in the glass. And uh, this is definitely my, my favorite. You could just call it a quote, I guess, but man in the glass is, um, and it's a few paragraphs. So forgive me, but uh, it says when you get what you want in your struggle for self and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts the most in your life is the one staring back at the glass. He's a fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's wealthy with you clear till the end. And you've passed your most difficult, dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the world down the pathway of years and get pats in the back as you pass. But your final reward will be the heartache and tears if you cheated the man in the glass. And so uh, that's that's uh, just look at man in the glass. And uh, it kind of goes back to uh, what I was talking about before with me just knowing that if I can look myself in the glass, look at myself in the mirror and know that for sure, like full integrity, I'm giving it my best. I don't have anything else to worry about. I have mm-hmm. faith that like whatever happens after that is what's supposed to happen. Things aren't happening. If I can, if I can get that approval of, of myself in the mirror, things aren't happening to me. They're not even happening because of me. Everything is, that's happening is happening in my best interest. And uh, so that's my favorite quote. Yes, man. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. This was an awesome episode. The last one I got for you before we let you go is where can our audience best find you online? Yeah. Um, so obviously LinkedIn and, uh, so just Jimmy Coleman on LinkedIn. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's just a good place to start. I would say. Perfect brother. Thanks again for coming on. Thanks man.